Welcome to part three of paper making. And in this clip we're going to be looking at pulping. And it's using Hollander beaters, using hydropulpers. And you're kind of asking me, well, Mark, why are you standing on a railway track? Well, I'll tell you, because my studio is right across the road there. And this is the main road through the South Island of New Zealand. And so cars, trucks, trains are going up and down here day and night. So if people are used to that, they're not worried about a few noisy, swishing, grinding sounds coming from my little paper mill over there. So join us today. We're going to be having quite a bit of fun. Uh, it's noisy. I'm kind of glad that I don't live in a quiet neighborhood. So here we go. Join us today and we'll have some fun. Okay, we'll see you in a minute. Down under there you can see the rotor in place and here is a guard and it is to stop everything flicking out. It's just riveted on with a bit of silicon glue. It's nothing special. So there you have it, the mighty hydropulpers. They're a little bit rickety, but they've been going for 25 years and um, they produce vast amounts of pulp. So this is the more rough fibrous pulp that I use for big art installations or stage sets. Now this machine is based on the Japanese Naginata beater, which has spinning blades and it more sort of threshes the pulp to pieces. So those blades aren't sharp, they don't do any cutting, but they do an awful lot of churning. A bit like a giant kitchen blender really. And um, these run all day long. Um, every hour on the hour I pull the plug, reload them, go away and do some more work. So they churn away, you can hear the noise in the background of when you're off doing other things. So 
If I want to refine the pulp further for um, handmade books or drawing papers or writing papers, I'll use the Hollander beaters. So we want to explore today a variety of pulps, not just the harakiki but also cotton rag. So I'll show you how to use the Hollander, load it all up, have a lots of fun. Okay, we'll see you soon. Well here we are, we're introducing our Hollander beaters. Um, there's a lineup of one, two, three, four of them. So we'll be having a look at the different sizes and what they're going to be doing. So this is the big one, the big 10 pound monster. Under here, this is the beta roll. So you can see it's a, a large spinning drum with bars on it and it spins over a bed plate. And as the pulp rolls through here, it gets a good beating. So there's a, a hammering, there's rubbing, and there's also pounding as it jumps over the lumps and bumps. So it's on a hinge, so that can go up and down. These are two stop bolts. So the stop bolts um, prevent the two working surfaces ever getting further than contact. This is the main screw, so this raises and lowers the roll. So up you get more gap, down you get more contact. So there it is. So what we're going to do is start running the hose into here and begin filling it up with water. So I'm going to show you how to cut up your rag, which is, if you don't know how to do it easily, it's one of the most tedious and long jobs in a paper mill. I've tried many different methods of doing this, from chopping it up with a meat cleaver, pairs of scissors, um, ripping it, all kinds of things. And I've even tried a circular saw with a sharpened saw blade but none is quite as good as the good old-fashioned bandsaw. So these bandsaws are quite commonly found in workshops. You can pick one up second hand. And what I've done is get a fine tooth blade and with an angle grinder, grind off the teeth until it's a sharp blade. Believe me, that is a very, very hard steel blade, so it takes quite a bit of time to wear those teeth off until you get a razor sharp edge. And then what you do is you take your cotton rag, which in this case comes from the second hand store, and I want to cut it into strips and then into squares. This batch will be a mixture of hara, harakiki pulp and cotton rag. I found that the cotton rag alone, if it's made from old sheets or old clothes, it's a bit soft. So the harakiki helps harden up that paper. Our cotton rag. 
all beautifully cut up. So spring thing up. Can you hear that thumping sound? That's the sound of the rag going under. And we'll come back in 20 or so minutes and see what that rag looks like. It's going to look a little bit sad. Uh, oh, we've got to run here. Alright, there goes the train. I told you it was noisy here. is a two pound capacity little critter Hollander beater. Um, I've made over 503 of these and they go all around the world. They're designed to fold up and fit in a DHL 25 kg carton. So they go around the world about the third the usual freight rates. Um, most places it can get there within a week which is pretty amazing. I called it the little critter because someone early on said, I'm going to hunt me down one of those little critters. And the name kind of stuck. So, like it or not, that's what they're called. Um, this one uh, is off to North Carolina. So, I can't hold on them too long. But we will come back in another video clip and devote, especially to this little machine, and tell you a bit more about the Little Hollander, Little Critter Hollander Beta project. Right, this is the smallest machine called the Little Butte. And this is my little prototype that I made. And I made a small machine like this because the local conservator at the art gallery said, Ah, Mark, I'll have one of your machines if it'll fit in my handbag. And I thought, okay. <laughs> so I made a small one to fit in a handbag. But I found the smaller and smaller and smaller you make them, the less efficient they become. And this is about the minimum size that you can make that will still function well as a Hollander Beater. So it's quite cute, quite small. And in this one, I'm going to be using colored rag. So if I want to make colored paper, I use colored rag. And it saves me dyeing it or making it you know, trying to add colour to it later. So, um, I forgot to mention, make sure that what you're pulping up is actually cotton. Because there's a lot of polycottons out there. And they don't make paper. So, the way you test it is that you strike a match and burn a little bit. And if it burns cleanly, with nice clean ash, it's cotton. But if it all beads up and smokes with black smoke, it's polycotton. Don't use it for making paper. So I've got the, um, this chopped up, so we'll set this little butte going. And I'd like some nice yellow paper, please.
that's the end of part three. I told you it was a bit noisy. Um, but join us for part four, which is sheet forming. So not only will we be making lots and lots of nice, flat papers for drawing, for making books, but we're also doing very large scale papers for stage sets, for art installations, for whatever you want to do with it, you can think up a method of making it. So there's nothing high tech about it, it's easy, um, you don't need a lot of people, just yourself, and so join us for part four coming up. So we'll see you then. Thank you.